Hello everyone, welcome to another Python tutorial series. In this video, I'm going to talk about making a Pong game and Pi game. So this is part 2 of the game, and in part 1 we created two paddles and were able to move them up and down. And in this video, we're going to create and move a ball, detect collision, make a scoreboard, and add sound effects. So, to create the ball class, we need to initialize some variables and define the draw function to draw the ball. Before that, let me show you what we had from last time. So we created two paddles and we can independently move them up and down using our keyboard. So to continue, let's create a ball class. So class ball. We have to define an init function of self, x, y, and radius. We are going to set self.x equal to x and self.y equal to y. Here we're going to set the center corner of the ball. Let's set the self dot radius equal to the radius. Self dot speed x is going to be four. Self dot speed y is going to be equal to negative three. And let's also define a draw function so we can actually draw the ball onto our window of self and wn. And then we can just write pi game dot draw dot circle since our ball is going to be a circle then window the color red um, because you want our ball to be red self dot x self dot y as our coordinates and lastly we want to have a radius which is going to be self dot radius now once you created this ball class we want to create a ball object and to create a ball object I'm going to go into my um, or I'm going to go above my player objects and create a ball object. So first of all, I'm going to create a radius variable equal to 15, and then a ball object, which is equal to um, an object of the ball class of the window width divided by two as the X, the window height divided by two as the Y, and the radius as the radius. And now we want to call the draw function in order to actually draw the ball. So right underneath where we draw our player, I can also draw my ball like that. So if I save and run this, I have a red ball in the center of our ping pong table, of our pong table. Now we can also create an update function so that the ball will actually move instead of just staying still. Now we can go back into our ball class and we can define an update function of self. Now we'll set self.x uh, and we'll increase the x value, the x coordinate, by the speed x value. Similarly, we'll do the same thing with the y. So self.y plus equal to self.speed y. And now once this update function is completed, we can go down into our game in our game loop, and we can call the ball's update function. Now I'm going to do this right underneath our player's update function as well. So if I save and run this, now the ball begins to move. And if I show this again, the ball uh, begins to move again. Now when we try to block the ball by moving our paddle, we find that we can't do that. So if I try to block the ball, the ball will go right through the paddle. And what we need to do is to detect collisions between the ball and the paddles. Now to do that, we need to decide under what condition that collisions will happen. So let's look at the sketches. I have this PowerPoint, and we see here uh, we have our paddle and our ball. So for our right paddle, we want to check if we want to check both the Y and the x-axis. Now for the y, we want to check if the ball's y position plus the ball's radius, if it's greater than the y of the paddle, the y position of the paddle, which is, and if the ball's y position minus the radius, if it's less than the paddle's uh, y plus the height, then all that means is that this condition is going to check if the ball is between the top and the bottom. 
So if the ball is somewhere up here, then this condition is going to be false, and you obviously know there's no collision there. But if the ball is in between the top and the bottom parts here, which is what this condition is going to check, then there is a possibility for a collision. Now the second thing we also need to check is the X. So we also want to check the X position of the ball and the X position of the player. So what that means is that if the X position of the ball is in between the left and right um, parts of the paddle, then that means that there is a possibility of collision. So these, if both of these collisions or conditions are true, then that means that there is a collision. So similarly with the left paddle, we have to check for the Y as well as the X. And for the Y, it's ball.y plus the ball.radius if it's greater than player.a.y or player a.y and ball.y minus ball.radius if this is less than player a.y plus the player a.height. And for the x, it's ball.x minus ball.radius if this is less than player a.x plus player a.width and ball.x minus ball.radius if this is greater than zero. Now, let's actually implement this into our code. Um, now to implement our collision, let's go into our game loop and right underneath where we draw, how about we check for collision. So collision with right paddle. Now if ball.x plus ball.radius is greater than player b.x and ball.x plus ball.radius is less than player b dot x plus player b dot width then we want to check the y so ball dot y plus ball dot radius is greater than player b dot y and ball dot y minus ball dot radius um, is less than player b dot y plus player b dot height. If both of these conditions are true, or then that means we will set ball dot speed x equal to the negative ball dot speed x, and this will basically reverse the direction of reverse the direction of the ball. So if the ball is initially traveling to the right. If we collide with the right paddle, it will then travel to the left. And so that was collision with the right paddle. Now let's do collision with left paddle. Now for collision with the left paddle, let's check if ball.x minus ball.radius, if this is less than player a.x plus player a.width, and ball.x minus ball dot radius is greater than zero. So this is checking for the x. Now we can check for the y. If ball dot y plus ball dot radius is greater than player a dot y and ball dot y minus ball dot radius is less than player a dot y plus player a dot height, then we will set ball dot speed x equal to the negative ball dot speed x. So if I save and run this, once I collide with the ball, um, once the ball hit my right paddle, you notice that it bounced off. So let me play this again. I'm going to hit the ball, and then you saw that it bounced off. Now you see that the ball still went above this top heading part. And so we also need to add in some boundaries. So we need to add in some boundary checking. Now to add in some boundary checking, let's go back into the update function of our ball class. And we can check it here. So boundary checking top and bottom. So if the self.y minus self.radius is less than zero, or the self.y plus self dot radius is greater than window height, then 
we want to set speed y equal to the negative speed negative self dot speed y and so if I save and run this once the ball hit the top it bounced downwards once the ball hit the bottom it should bounce up which it does so if I keep playing it like this you'll see that the ball keeps bouncing up and down up and down up and down All right, cool. So another thing we want to possibly add is a scoreboard for the game. And in this game, I'm going to create a scoreboard each for um, each player. Now to create the scoreboard, I'm going to create a function up here. Let's create a function right there. Define scoreboard A with a parameter of score. So I'm going to have a font equal to pygame.font.font none 50 this is going to be the font of the text on the screen the text is going to be equal to font.render string score so this score value is going to be an integer I'm converting it to a string true black the color is going to be black the text width is going to be equal to text.get width and x is equal to int the window width divided by 2 minus the text width divided by 2 minus 50 and this is going to represent the x coordinate of the text and then we're going to blit this onto the screen so wn.blit text x20 so these are the coordinates now to do this with scoreboard b instead of writing this all out again I'm just going to quickly copy and paste it and change a few things so now it's going to be scoreboard B instead of scoreboard A and yeah that's pretty much it except here instead of minus 50 let's change this to plus 50 so now I'm going to save this and before I run this I'm going to initialize a score I need to initialize a score variable so in the ball class I'm going to add a self.score A, which is equal to zero, and self.score B, which is also going to be equal to zero. Now I'm also going to add in the boundary checking section um, to check if the ball leaves through the left or right section or leaves through the left or right window. And when it does, I just want to increase the score of whoever scored. So in this update function, I want to check if self.x plus self.radius is less than 0, self.score b plus equal to 1. And what this basically means is that once the ball, or when the ball goes out of the left boundary, then I want to increase player b score. Similarly, if the ball goes to the right boundary, I want to increase player A score. So sub the x minus sub dot radius greater than window width self dot score A plus equal to one. And so let me comment this when the ball goes out of the right boundary. And also, when the ball goes out of the left or right boundary, we want to reset its position to the center and then continue the game. So to quickly reset the position, I'm just going to set self.x equal to window width over 2, self.y equal to window height over 2, and do the same thing if it exits the right boundary, just like that. Finally, we can call the scoreboard function to actually show the score. So in the game loop, let me go to the game loop. In this game loop, I'm going to call both the scoreboard A and scoreboard B functions that we created earlier. So scoreboard B, ball.score. And so if I save and run this, 
I have my two scores on the top right there. And you notice that when the ball goes out the right side, play, the left player's score increases. So I'm going to actually try to defend this now. And let's see if we can get player B a point. What you do? So player B now gets a point. It's another point. And we can keep playing like this until how many points you guys want to play to. Close this. So to make our game a little more interesting, we can also add in sound effects. So let's add in two sound effects, a pong sound or a collision sound and a whistle sound. Now I'm going to add these sound effects right above this game loop. And I'm going to have a pong sound variable, which is equal to pygame.mixer. Uh, sound and then the sound file that's in so assets slash pong sound .wav. Now I'm also going to have a whistle sound and this is equal to pygame dot mixer dot sound and this is in my assets folder and whistle dot wav. So I have a pong and whistle sound. Let's add in our pong sound first. So I'm going to add this or I'm going to play this pong sound when there's a collision with the paddle so right here in our game loop when there's a collision with the right and left paddle I'm going to play the pong sound so pong sound dot play and pong sound dot play now when the ball leaves the left and right boundaries I'm also going to play a whistle sound but before we do that let's see this pong sound let's hear it so there was a, basically a sound right there, another one, let's do this one more time, and another one. Okay. So now we can also add in our whistle sound, which I'm going to add right here in the update function of our ball class. And so when the ball leaves the left or right boundary, I'm going to call whistle.play and whistle.play. So if I save and run this, if I let them earn a point, there's a whistle sound. I'll try to earn a point for player B. Whistle. There's a whistle. Nice. So we both we added both the whistle sound and the pong sounds to our game. So this is the end of this video. If you have any comments, please put them uh, below at the comment section. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.